It's kitchen floor time. We are doing Candine glue down vinyl tiles, something I've never done before, but we're gonna give it a shot. For those of you who haven't seen the first video, this was tiled originally and it failed. So I've ripped that up and we're starting from scratch. Previously, I left a few tiles in because the units were pinning them in. I've put in some extra legs at the back and I've wound the front up so I could clear the front tiles. I've left the tiles in below the washing machine, but I had to take out round the side. I removed all of the tile adhesive from this whole lot. That was quite a task. And there was a few screws that were protruding. So I've sorted them out as well. This is overboarded with 18 mil plier over the original floorboards. There's not enough screws in it, which is one of the reasons why the original tiled floor failed. So I'm gonna put some more screws in it and then we're gonna overboard it again. At the moment, it's like a patchwork quilt. So we're gonna try and avoid that as much as possible and use big pieces. Getting full sheets of ply up the stairs was quite difficult, but it had to be done. Otherwise we'd have too many joints in the floor that could potentially show through the final at the top. I've got a box of 30 by four mil screws. We're gonna use these because they can go through the 80 mil plier, attach themselves to the original floorboards without the threat of going all the way through and maybe piercing a pipe because you don't know what anyone else has done underneath this bloody floor and there might be anything there. I've got the Cardine pressure sensitive adhesive. This is five liters. It will do more than this area, loads, but I've just been reading the back. You won't be able to read this, but go with it. Proper sun floor preparation. Sun floor? <laughs> is this a knockoff? That's supposed to say sub floor. Preparation is vital for the correct installation of any floor covering. Sub floors must be structurally sound, smooth, not smooth, smooth. I put a load of screws in it now, so it's structurally sound, but is my sun floor Smooth. My sun floor is not smooth at the moment <laughs> because, especially this bit anyway, uh, if anyone knows anything about tiling and lippage, you get your credit card, look, there's the lippage. So that's about one mil higher. Uh, if I had all of my tools, I probably would plane that down just in case. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go over the top of the, all of this with five and a half mil plier which is there and because this section is the worst I'm going to go the biggest sheet here and then we'll do the little bits around. This is my initial thinking so I slid the board right underneath the feet and then I was gonna fill in this section here, that section there, that's where the fridge freezer goes, so that doesn't really matter. And then this section here. These are the tiles, and they are about 456 long, and what is it, about 300 wide? These are a riven slate look, and you can get the grout liners, they're called design strips that you can go in between, but I haven't got them. Now the reason I haven't got them is because I'd, well, I ordered them, but I ordered the wrong ones, so the actual supplier for this one. They only had a certain amount on their website and I got the ebony ones and I was I, I assumed that was like ebony in terms of like color, like black basically. They come with wood graining, so I'm not using them. I had a chat with Lou and she said that she'd just be happy just to lay it without the grout lines. And I think it might look all right, but if you do want to get the grout lines or the design strips, you need to get them specially ordered. So just bear that in mind when you go for this. So I'll be looking to lay this at half bond or brick bond, which is about there. See, I don't want any of these tiles to end up finishing there or close to a joint. I need to make a decision whether I want a small sliver down there whether I'm happy with this. I think I'm gonna to have to slive a bit down here on the basis that your feet, you're not gonna walk on that section, if you understand, it's like almost tucked underneath there. Having that ball down, I could notice this, 
this level difference between here and here. Whilst I don't have my planar, I do have a chisel. So I'm just going to take that edge off just so it's not as prominent and yeah, hopefully that will be better for the finished floor. First sheet down, I did need to trim off this little corner here. I've done it with my circular saw because I don't have my plunge saw. I've put loads of screws in this, loads. 150 spacings down the edge, all around the perimeter and loads in the centre as well. Need to cut out this section now. Now, because I don't have my plunge slash track saw, I've only got the circular saw, I want to keep the factory edge up against this side. So I'm just going to measure this and then we transfer that measurement onto this sheet. I'll cut it with a circular saw then. My sun floor is done. Look how smart it is. <laughs> okay, there's a million screws in this. There's loads. I've just, I've, I've even done an even closer 100 mil gap just there because that's where you walk on it more. Some areas, the screws didn't, it didn't grab properly. So I just took it back out so I could get them in properly. So they're, they are below the surface or flush. You definitely want an impact driver for this kind of thing and this right angle drill bit. That's from DeWalt. That come in quite handy to sneak it in underneath the unit over there. When I read the instructions earlier, I realized that I needed to prime the floor if you've got a, an absorbent surface. Don't use PVA. If PVA gets wet, it re-emulsifies. So that's a load of rubbish. I would always go for SBR. So it's a little bit more expensive, but this definitely works. I'm gonna mark out and lay out the floor so I haven't got stupid slivers at the end. Hashtag gifted. Uh, right, so I'm going for roughly halfway in, in this hallway, and then that leaves me with uh, roughly three quarter tile there, which will give me, if I'm doing half bond, I'll have three eighths of a tile here, which is pretty much the same as what this bit's going to be over here. That's a full tile there. If this is a full tile, tucks just underneath the skirt in there, I'll end up with two thirds of a tile on this side. So everything will work out. The only thing that's gonna be a little bit off is this corner here, because this bank of units goes off that way. Now I'm gonna draw lines on the floor to know exactly where that is. And then I can SBR it. I should be able to see the pencil marks through the SBR for tomorrow as well. Okay, next day it's dry. It's a little bit tacky here and there, but it's pretty much there. If you don't know how to do this stuff, just read the instructions. And on there, it says to use an A2 notch trowel, which is a very slightly serrated thing. You spread that and then it says to roll it afterwards. So I've got a little foam roller where I'm gonna basically spread it out. I think that that pretty much gives you the right thickness. A lot of people just use a notch trowel and then leave it at that, but apparently you get grin through on that. It's basically, you can see the notches on uh, through the vinyl, apparently. Now this vinyl's two mil thick. I just can't see it happening. I really can't see it happening. We're gonna do a little bit of an experiment anyway, before we actually crack on to the proper floor. But another thing as well, it's recommended that you fill this and the screw heads now there's like hardly any gap on there whatsoever and the screw heads they're either flush or very slightly below allegedly that shows through onto this i just can't see it happening i'm not going to waste my time doing all of that the pros use staples to just do everything so they don't have to fill bits i'm just going to go with how it is exactly now i'm not going to fill anything so i will be your guinea pig and you can, depending on when you watch this, ask me whether the screws are showing through or, or the seams showing through. I, I really don't think it will. I think that's over the top, but we'll, we'll see whether I'm just about to mess it all up. 
In terms of layout and the normal laying process, what you'd normally do is ping a line down the centre and work that way. So you glue one half or a, a metre strip, I think, and then you work one way and then you carry on. But what I want to do is work from this edge. There's my line. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the, in the doorway. I'll run that down there. I'm going to use my laser there and then I'm going to work this way. The decision that I need to make is how much glue am I going to spread on the floor? Because you're supposed to leave it 10 minutes before you stick the tiles down. But is it 10 minutes or can it be less than that? Can it be more than that? If I was to glue the whole area, am I going to get across the floor in say an hour? Is it going to be too, too dry by that time? So I'm going to do a little experiment. I've SBR'd another bit of wood and we're going to spread some adhesive on it. And we'll see exactly what happens in terms of time and, and whether I could leave it an hour or whether I can only glue half of it and just do half at a time, if you understand. On this first row of tiles, there'll be a full tile at that end, which means I'll end up with a 0.7 tile roughly down here. I'm going to lay that out now, cut that tile, and I can use that off cut on the test piece. Once I know exactly what happens with the adhesive, we can come back and crack out this whole floor. You're going to help dad, eh? You better, you better not get footprints. You don't get stuck on the floor. We don't want you stuck on the floor, do we? Experiment time. I've got this piece of ply. It's sectioned off 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 there. That's the amount of time that I'm going to actually leave it. Right, we're at 10 minutes. Oh, that's still really wet. That's still really wet. We'll just stick it on anyway. Right, we can still move it about. The glue hasn't gone off. We did a little roll up. As I'm rolling it, it's still moving. 20 minutes. Still really wet. Put it on. Doesn't seem to move as much. Flexes a little bit, not as much as before. 20 minutes is better than 10. 30 minutes. Still wet, a bit more tacky now. Put this on. Slides a little tiny bit, not much. Okay, doesn't move at all when you roll it. 40 minute mark. That's pretty similar to the half an hour one. Yeah, similar. Moves a little bit, not too much. Doesn't move when you roll it. It's got a little bit of movement in it. But if you needed to move it for email. 50 minute mark. Still wet. Pretty much the same tackiness as before. Okay, less movement. You can move it maybe a mil or two. No movement at all. Okay, that's hardly moving. One hour. That is tacky. I wouldn't say I wouldn't describe it as wet anymore, that's for sure. Really quite hard to move into place. You've got maybe like half a mil, a mil of movement. Doesn't move at all. This one's still got a little bit of movement. That one's got more. That one's got more. That one's got more. That one's got a lot. Right, so I'm saying an hour, you, you're you're definitely at your limit and you better pl you better place your tiles bang on let's just have a quick check whether we can peel these off right you can definitely peel that one off 20 minutes yet yeah, you can 30 or oh, it's a bit more difficult you can though is it stick that down? Yeah. 40. That the same. 50. That is a lot harder. Okay. 60. 
no, that, that doesn't want to come up. I've got decisions to make now. So it looks like you put your adhesive down, rolled it out straight away. I should mention it's probably about maybe like 16, 17 degrees in here. 20 minutes, start sticking down. I've got basically half an hour at push maybe 35 minutes to get this whole floor down. I believe it's 37 tiles. Obviously I've got cuts at either end and stuff. And that means, let, let's say I've got just less than a minute each tile. Shall I just bang it out? Should I bang it out? Should I just do the whole lot? Uh, I'll have to I'll, I'll have to glue it really bloody quickly when I in an ideal world I would start gluing there come this way do all of that and then this would be the last piece that I actually spread because that's the bit that I want to dry the least because I, I'd say between there and there there's probably going to be a five minute difference eh? I think I'm just going to go for it. If I glue as quickly as I possibly can, this is it's five square meters, roughly. Glue really quickly, wait 20 minutes, start sticking it down. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut, you see just underneath the cabinets, I've got full tiles and then half tiles. I'm going to cut them half tiles so they're ready to just whack in. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. The instructions on that adhesive say to use, a, I think it's a 68 kilogram roller. So that's beyond DIYs, that's professional level. But I'm gonna use this roller. It's just like a craft roller. I used to use this on lino cuts, which is like printing basically. So you can get it from a craft shop. I'm sure there's other stuff out there, but I'm just gonna put as much pressure as I can on it when I roll it out. And then after I've finished, within one to four hours you need to roll it again so i'm going to leave it an hour roll it and then i'm back off to the barn i can't do a time lapse because my camera needs to be upright so it's going to be normal i'll speed it up here when i edit <laughs> Okay, so that, that took me 20 minutes. Now the issue that I've got is that was 20 minutes over there. So that means I absolutely need to be doing that corner in the next half an hour, otherwise I'm done for. This has only just been done, so I'm gonna leave it. All right, if I leave it five minutes, then I need to get over to that corner by 25 minutes. So I'm gonna to have to go this way and then maybe stagger it up and then work this way. I think that's what I'll do. Okay, you can just make out the line that I've left to line up, but my laser is over there. Whoa, <laughs> what a brilliant idea having a remote. Brilliant. Hupa. Okay, it's been five minutes. Should we go? Let's go! get quicker <laughs> you need to get quicker shit all right these move this is the trouble
we're getting there. We're getting there. Step up the pace. I need some new socks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we are almost there. Don't do what I've done. That was just a stupid idea. There's an ideal time when you want to put this down and it's halfway in between what I've done. The best way to do it, get it. So overlap this side, this side. Yeah, when it's nice and dry, I'd say like the half hour limit. And then just move it into place. And then push it down. Right. Well, that was hard work. Um, I've still got, I've got a few little gaps here and there. I've ruined put two pairs of socks, so they're sticky. I can close them gaps up slightly. Just work my way to the wall. I don't know whether you noticed, I stopped rolling. So I'm gonna roll it now. That was proper hard work. Um, I definitely made a mistake. Don't do what I done. I would say if I would have split this in two, it would have been a lot easier. I should have put a line here and done that bit and then that bit separate because I could have glued that whole section let it set for like 25 minutes and then stuck it down because what was happening as I was walking on it it was moving ever so slightly especially around this bit the first section because it was still like it, it hadn't gone off enough so there are little tiny gaps I'll try and get it on camera for you it's not everywhere but it is in a few places and as a result of that whenever I stood on a joint the glue would come up in between so it's the, the state of my socks. So this is my second pair of socks. These jeans as well look stuck on my knees, kneeling down. It just like any point load, it just pushed the glue up in between the, the seams. Can you see that tiny gap going that way? Probably not. But yeah, it's not perfect. Oh, this is a worse one. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. That's the worst one on the floor. And I couldn't correct that because it was just, it was here, it was the first bit I laid, so I've just left it. Because if I correct that, it will throw this bit out. I didn't mix the pack up as well. I just took it out and laid it. And obviously you see me, I went from here, 
travelled across and went over there. I've just got away with it. So if you was doing a bigger area in this, then mix up your pack. The fridge will be going here, so you won't see that bit. So I've got a tiny mottle section like going across there, fractured, and then split over here. But it's okay, it kind of like directs you in the room anyway. Directs your eye this way. <laughs> this is the way to the sink. This is the way to the cooker cook me dinner and wash the dishes. Now the floor took me about an hour and 20 minutes to lay roughly. And if you was interested in knowing the cost of all the materials, this is a breakdown here. Right, so I think that's me then. I'm gonna uh, tidy up my stuff. I'll give it a little bit, sit down for like 20 minutes. That'll be an hour. And just before I leave, I'm gonna quickly roll this again and then I'm off. This floor only needs to last, say, 10 years. Uh, this is uh, gonna be rented out. And then uh, I reckon by the end of that 10 year period, the mortgage uh, will probably sell this and then get a lovely big, I don't know, some kind of like mansion with loads of outbuildings because I'll be a millionaire by that point, eh? <laughs> right, well. Any questions, let me know. But thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you haven't already. I'll see you later.